Hello, this is Dr. Joanne Manson, Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School and Brigham and Women's Hospital. I'd like to talk with you about the Endocrine Society's recent clinical practice guidelines on vitamin D for disease prevention rolled out at the Endocrine Society meetings in June 2024. Now, the bottom line of these guidelines is that there is a very limited role for vitamin D supplementation and for screening for vitamin D deficiency in the general population. Um, the guidelines generally endorse the recommended dietary allowances that were set forth by the Institute of Medicine, now known as the National Academy of Medicine, in 2011, which include um, an RDA of uh, 600 IUs a day for adults up through age 70, and 800 IUs a day after age uh, 70. And um, there were several groups identified uh, in these guidelines who may benefit from intakes above the RDA. And these groups include older adults, um, those uh, 75 and older, who may benefit in terms of reducing mortality. We know that um, older adults do have decreased intestinal absorption of uh, vitamin D and skin uh, synthesis of vitamin D and therefore may benefit also uh, children and adolescents um, have potential benefits for preventing rickets, as well as reducing risk of respiratory tract infections in those age groups. Uh, during pregnancy, a potential role for reducing preeclampsia and other pre uh, pregnancy-related complications. And in the setting of prediabetes, for the purpose of reducing progression to type 2 diabetes. Now, the guidelines um, from the Endocrine Society did not recommend specific intakes of vitamin D uh, for these clinical scenarios, but did state that um, these, these groups may benefit from intakes above the RDA. Now, most of the population um, seems to do well with the RDA level, small to moderate amounts of vitamin D. This may be because um, vitamin D is um, the, the um, metabolism and the physiology of vitamin D is very tightly regulated in the body. And so most of us can get by with smaller amounts. However, there are several other groups who may need higher intakes, and these include people with malabsorption of uh, conditions such as Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, inflammatory bowel disease, gast post-gastric bypass surgery, um, people with osteoporosis taking medications for osteoporosis, also um, nursing home residents who may have low intake as well as very little time outdoors. Now, what else have we learned from other randomized trials about who may benefit from vitamin D? Well, one point is that daily dosing of vitamin D may be safer and more effective than the intermittent bolus dosing with high, very large amounts of vitamin D. That seems to be uh, the case. Also, there are randomized trials such as uh, vitamin D omega-3 trial, VITAL, and other trials suggesting benefits of vitamin D supplementation for reducing risk of advanced cancer, cancer death, meta-analyses now um, are bearing that out with half a dozen uh, studies in these meta-analyses suggesting benefits in that area, also potential benefits for reducing autoimmune diseases. So um, those who have um, special risk factors for these conditions or strong family uh, histories of these conditions may want to consider supplementation. It appears uh, from these randomized trials that uh, doses of at least 2,000 I use day, if not higher, um, are quite safe for many years. Uh, 2,000 I use a day was safe 
for 5.3 years in, in the VITAL trial. It's also been found that uh, in, in these randomized trials that body mass index and adiposity may modify the efficacy of vitamin D supplementation such that there were benefits um, in those with a BMI below 25 for many health conditions, including cancer, autoimmune diseases, and others um, with quite substantial risk reductions, but um, no or minimal reductions were found in those with higher BMIs. So I think we definitely need more research to identify ways where uh, vitamin D supplementation may be of benefit across all categories of BMI, and this may include using metabolized forms of vitamin D, such as calcidiol or other uh, formulations that whose efficacy would not uh, vary according to adiposity and BMI. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. This is Joanne Manson.